Hello, Tea Quilters. It's T. Today is Saturday, September 10th, 2022. And it's almost 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're here for live sewing chat. So we will just give people a chance to get in. I'm in a few minutes early. Just came in here. And I need to pull you all up on my cell so I can read the chat comments. Let's see. We need to search. Search, search. All right, so we're going to wait for people to get in. Let's see, we got like another official minute. <laughs> I hope everybody has been having a great week. Um, sorry, I just hit the mic, guys. I'm not used to it being on this side. I put it on the opposite side today. Live chat here. We have Phyllis G saying hi to and everyone. Earlene Butler saying hi to and fellow quilters. I made it tonight. Welcome back, Earlene. Linda Faust says hi, Miss T and everyone. Quilt gal, hi T and everyone. Just listening in tonight, working on a project. That's awesome. Let us know what it is before you disappear. Uh, Jennifer Muzard says, hey, T Quilters, I have three embroidery machines running, so I probably won't hear a word, but just in case. Hey, Jennifer. Uh, Melissa LePage, happy belated birthday as well, Jennifer. Melissa LePage says, good evening, T and everyone. Flowering Ward 17 says, hello, everyone. I finally remember and checked in on time. Hello and welcome to the live chat. Appreciate you popping in with us. Mona did what? Says, hi everyone. Marissa Dendrick says, happy Saturday. Hey, welcome to the chat as well. See Joy Creation says, hi T and everyone. Uh, Flower Girls working on crafting some boho beads. So I might just watch and listen. That's awesome. Francis Jackson says, hello T and everyone from Michigan. Harriet Franklin says, hello, T and others. Kevin the Quilter is here, says, evening, Miss T and all T quilters. Craft with Love 55 says, greetings, T and all. <laughs> um, let's see. Judy Judy, hello, T and quilters. Rich Rutley says, hello, T and all my quilting friends from New Jersey. Sue says, hello. My friends and fellow quilters, a special hello to T, queen of retreats. Yes. Um, Debs S says, thankful I finally caught a live. Love listening to you. Well, thank you, Deb. That's awesome. Lenora says, evening, Miss T and quilters family. Oh, you're so welcome, Jennifer. She's saying uh, she loved the picture of us on my Facebook birthday wish from you. That's awesome. A lot of people wished you happy birthday. So that was really sweet. And I'm still probably hitting this mic. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry if I am. Sheila Willis is here. Hey, Sheila. She says, hi, Tim, everyone. Raining in Tennessee. Yes, hunty. Just about 30 minutes ago, it started pouring down. It's been thundering. So I'm hoping that we get through this live chat. We may or may not. Who knows? <laughs> so. Also, Sheila is our thumbnail guest appearance today. <laughs> and Sheila was also at retreat. If you all don't know, I've been using thumb uh, pictures uh, as my thumbnails to highlight all the people that came to retreat. So I'm almost done. I'm in the S. <laughs> so it's not that many more I have to go. But um, Sheila has been a longtime supporter of my YouTube channel. So She's another one of those people that is awesome to put a face 
to a name. I got to see her face because she does attend our Zoom meetings on a regular basis that Eric uh, Oda hosts. And so I do know who she is. So she was no surprise to see. She's pretty quiet in, in the Zoom. She's also pretty quiet <laughs> in person. Uh, very knowledgeable. You talk to her. It's those quiet people that you never know what's going on in their heads. And then you start talking to them and you realize, OK, they know a whole lot of stuff up in here. And uh, so it was great. I got to sit with her for a little bit. We were working on she had some uh, dilemma with the stack and whack. Uh, wasn't working uh, correctly for her. And we had to figure out what that issue was. So I got to sit with her for a while very patient <laughs> and uh, very nice person. So Sheila, it was great to meet you in person. And thank you uh, for also coming to retreat from Tennessee. She drove from Tennessee. <laughs> so that was really awesome. So thank you and look forward to seeing you again. <laughs> like I said uh, before, everybody on the retreat kind of left being uh, friends. We, um, had such a great time. It was such a great group of quilters. Miss Topaz is here saying, hey, T and quilters. Joe Carmel Perkins says, hi, Miss T and fellow quilters working while listening. Janice Miller says, hi, T and T quilters. And Damali J is here saying, hi, T and everyone. I've hit the thumbs up already. So thank you, Damali. If you haven't hit the thumbs up already, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button to support the channel. It also keeps us in the rotation of people looking for quilting uh, channels as well. So thank you. Thank you, Mona. <laughs> Betsy is here saying good evening all. Happy rainy Saturday night, Miss T. I really need a math lesson. <laughs> okay, here we go again. <laughs> that was two weeks ago. <laughs> Um, Melina Montoya says, hello, everyone working on two baby quilts. That is awesome. You know, I forgot on Wednesday to share some news. I'm actually going to be a maternal grandmother. Okay. <laughs> um, my daughter told everyone on Labor Day, I knew a little bit ago, but I uh, just waited to share that information with you guys. Um, her baby is going to be due early January. She's got an early January due date. We're having her shower in November so we can get it done before Christmas. So yeah, <laughs> things are changing, but I have told her that I'm not going to be her everyday babysitter. I've told her, um, you know, I have things to do. I'm not, I'm retired, but I'm not retired. You know, I still have a job that I created for myself. You know, I have my own business. So uh cute lady corpus says hello everyone hope everyone had a fabulous day hello welcome and thanks for your comment on my last video appreciate that that was really nice judith thorpe is here saying hi t from yuma arizona hello judith and welcome as well georgia b welcome to says hi t and and all quilters from ohio sandy agar is here whoop whoop <laughs> Hello, T, and quilt friends. Yes. Hey, Sandy. <laughs> Cynthia Maria Fear saying hi, everyone, waving and reminding everybody to hit that thumbs up as well. So thank you. Vanessa Brown, good evening to T and all T quilters. Don Krogel, Krogel says, any more of the shirt you're wearing available in a large? How much would I send to who? I might have extra large. I'm not sure if I have. I have to look at my supply. Uh, email me. That's the best way to get information. <laughs> I don't put these on my website because these are kind of a special order shirt. But every once in a while, I will order a couple of extra sizes. Most times, I'm ordering something that's in XL because that's the size I wear. So I can, if nobody buys it, I can, I'll make my own self a shirt. Um, uh, but this is my T quilt uh, established. It's my T gear number one on my website, but you can get it in any pattern. This shirt is an upcharge because they charge for tea, uh, tie dyeing the shirt. But email me, tquilts at tquilts.com. Very simple, easy email to remember. And then I can check my 
uh, supply for you and let you know because I have no idea if I have a size large. Let's see. <laughs> Melissa says, did you find a new stylist T or did you end up having to do it yourself? <laughs> Looks great anyway, either way. This one I did myself. And it's a whole saga to that that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. And Sue's ain't no rain in South County where she is. Um, Wash your hands is here waving hello. The debt free quilter is here. Hey, hey. Vivian Calvi says hi, T and everyone. Teresa McCormick says hi, Miss TNT quilters. Teresa, I'm not sure. I haven't answered your message on Facebook because I'm not at my desk. <laughs> I haven't been at my desk. I've been doing some other stuff. But I um, I do have your message still in my uh, Facebook mess messenger. So I'll get to you. Oh, and Sheila, she's saying thank you. Uh, Sheila, I did just go ahead and remail you a book. I can't remember if I mailed it yesterday or Thursday. It's, it's a lot been going on this week. So I can't remember which day, but I did remail you a book. My brother is here saying, hey, sis and everyone, stay safe still. Hello, hello, brother. Welcome. Scotty Hugin says, hello, how's everybody doing, Miss T and all? It's been a rainy day in Memphis, Tennessee. Cynthia Shade says, hello to all T quilters from Chicago. Maddie Barnum says, hi, T and everyone. And uh, my brother is also reminding people to give a thumbs up. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Wash your hands says, I went to Hobby Lobby today, 50% off making jewelry items. You know, I, it's a few things in jewelry that I want to do. I want to, <laughs> and it's like, do I go and invest in another craft and where do I put this stuff? <laughs> okay. But basically, you, I think I already have like needle nose pliers, things like that. I think I need just wire and I need the end caps and stuff like that. That's what I think I need. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to stay. I'm not going to do it right now, though. I'm going to contemplate it a little bit. Joe Cormell talking about congratulations, Granny T. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's what she, my daughter's asking me. What do you want her to call you? I say, Queen. <laughs> Messing with her. She looked at me. She was like, I'm like, oh, so she does listen every now and then. Because <laughs> sometimes I give her advice. It seems like she doesn't listen, you know. Thank you guys for the congratulations. And Melina says she's expecting grandson in November. He will be her third grandchild. So that's nice. Thank you, Francis, say that her rent is paid. <laughs> um, Tom Eckery is here saying... Hey, Miss T and all T Quilter, smash the like button for Miss T. Thank you, Tom. Uh, congratulations to you and your daughter. Thank you. Margaret Dearden is here, says hello, T and T Quilter, also known as C Rax. <laughs> she comes in under both of them, then I get confused, but then I do know who it is in the end. It's like, you know, I'm just reading here. <laughs> Diane57 is here. Um, hi, T and friends. Paula S. is here saying hello, T and T quilt friends. Joyce London says hi all tonight. Congratulations. Thank you, Joyce, and welcome to the channel as well. Thank you, Kevin, for putting the email out there. They won't let you put email addresses in the chat, so you have to take what he's putting in there and take out any spaces. They will not let you put emails in there straight. So... Hi, Carol Williams. She says, good evening. Uh, Lizette Zayas is here saying hello, T and friends. Hey, Lizette, welcome back. I don't know if you've been in here or, or if I just don't remember. <laughs> I see comments from you and I see posts in the Facebook group. 
KD Craft says, hello, everyone. Can only stay a few minutes going to dinner soon. So that's always a good thing to do. Go eat some good food. <laughs> um, T, don't you babysit the dog? I do, but the dog is different than a crying baby, okay? <laughs> now, I told my daughter, I don't know if her, her baby's going to be like her, but my daughter was, if you were in the room with her, long as she could see you, she was okay. If you went to go step out to go wash a load of clothes or take some, you know, take some dishes back or something, cleaning up, trying to go get a broom or something. She would have a fit. As soon as you walk back in the room, everything's A-OK. -okay. So it's going to be interesting. Unless I sent a message in my sleep, I'm not discounting. I don't think it was me, but it would be happy to hear from you anytime. I thought it was you. Uh, well, I'll check. <laughs> um, <laughs> Melissa saying, you ain't no me, <laughs> Uh Darcy Savelli is here. Hey, Darcy says, hi, Tan. I'll quilt if my video won't start for some reason. I'm going to keep trying. I still wanted to get in here and remind everybody to give T a thumbs up. Thank you, Darcy. Sorry you're having connection issues. Look like everything's going fine here. I got this screen on pause just to have less power going through since we do have some rain and thunderstorms. Hey, Remo JS says, good evening, Miss T and Quilters. Thumbs up. Um, Carrie Richard says, hello, T and everyone. Hey, Carrie. Kevin. Hey, Kevin T. Quilter. Thank you. Is our Miss T going to be a grandma T? Congrats, T. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Celia Swain. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm trying to get down here to the bottom. I'm at the bottom. Yay. <laughs> All right, Teresa Louise, I quilt too. Is here saying hello, T. Waving. Hey, Teresa. Welcome back. And thanks, Rich. Appreciate that. So we're through the chat. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Today has been one of those days. Um, I, what have I done since Wednesday? Uh, Thursday, I think I took the day off. Uh, Thursday. I was so tired. I was just probably doing stuff around the house on Thursday. I don't remember doing anything productive sewing wise. And then yesterday, my niece from Alabama that normally is in my chat, I tell you that's my niece. She was in town. And so she stopped by and gave me a surprise visit yesterday and they stayed for a few hours. So that was really nice. And then after that, I ended up cutting out four cosmetic bags and so I still I have a list of about eight people or something like that on my list so I start cutting out so instead of me cutting for just one I went ahead and cut all four even though only two of them have the same fabric I went ahead and cut everything I got everything prepped all the way down to picking the zippers picking the snaps everything the hardware has all been pulled out handles been cut inside pockets are cut so now I just need to sew. So I'm going to sew, I'm going to chain sew anything that I can sew where it doesn't matter what color thread I use. And then when I have to start top stitching, then I'll have to work on just one bag at a time or one colorway at a time. So I have started that. As you all can see, <laughs> today I got up. Now that was yesterday that I cut the bags thinking that I was going to come back and work on it today. Well, I didn't do that. I came back and decided I was going to wash my hair. And I'm not even going to tell you what happened before I washed my hair because I had an incident before I washed my hair. <laughs> but then I washed my hair. Everything's fine. My hair is done as far as what I'm going to do to it. I'm, I put in really large twists. Because I'm thinking about, you know, redoing it, braiding, getting my hair braided, either somebody else or me. So I was like, just put something in it so you can control it for a minute. 
So then I go and start cleaning up. I'm washing shampoo bottles getting combs uh, rinsed out, washed my, I cut my hair, I cut a few inches off my hair just to make it more manageable for me. And uh, I go and I'm cleaning everything up. And I have a towel that I'm drying the, uh, the, the scissors blades with. Okay, and these are beautician or hairstylist scissors. <laughs> okay, and I didn't know them things was that sharp, okay? So how come I end up in the urgent care center today? Okay. <laughs> I got four stitches and I had to get a tetanus shot because I haven't had one in over 10 years. So today has not been a great day. And like I said, I already had an incident this morning. So when I got home from urgent care, I popped my little butt right in bed and said I wasn't doing a thing. I was in the middle of washing. I had washed a load of clothes that needed to get in the dry. I'm like, I don't care. They're not going to get in there. So my husband, he's like, do you want everything dried? I'm like, I really don't know, but just throw it in there. Whatever gets ruined in the dryer. I don't normally dry my clothes, but I'm not going to have him try to figure out what I dry and don't dry. I dry jeans and socks and some underwear, <laughs> not all of it. And it's like, that's just hard to tell somebody to go do something for you that's a particular, when you're particular about it. I'm like, just dry it. Whatever gets ruined, I'll go rebuy it, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I ended up in urgent care to get four stitches, okay? I have been sitting down every, every since. So here is my... <laughs> hand okay <laughs> i got a big bandage on it and the reason why the bandage is big is because when you have your thumb it's hard to keep a bandage on your thumb so they have to kind of bandage the whole thing but i probably got a jagged cut i'm gonna say about an inch to an inch and a quarter it's got four stitches in it so you know and they put space in between them so it was pretty bad. And the reason why I went is because the other times I've gone when I, I had not gone early enough when I cut myself with the rotary cutter, I've cut myself twice. And both times I've gone, I was too late to get stitches. So this time I had to get dressed because, of course, I'm wash I just finished washing my hair. So who gets dressed and then wash their hair? So I was in scrubs <laughs> as they say i was in clothes i would wear around the house so i had to stop get dressed uh take a shower all that before i could go to the urgent care because i'm not going to a health care center where they're going to be <laughs> all over you and, and you you're smelling like any and anything so yeah so it was just a long day <laughs> I hadn't eaten a thing. This happened about, I want to say close to one o'clock, something like that. And then I uh, got to the urgent care and probably got back home about four. I had to go to the drugstore too to get more wrapping. I had bandage because in order for me to stop it bleeding, I had to wrap it really, really tight with gauze. And then I wrapped, I had some of this in beige. And then I wrapped it really tight so it would not bleed. But yeah, it's like I can't even hold a pair of scissors now. And I did, had no clue. I had, like I said, I was drying the scissors through a thick bath cloth. Like uh, the towel I had, I had wrapped my uh, to get moisture out of my hair. I it was pretty thick, and I was just really surprised. I'm like, can I not feel that I was rubbing that hard? I don't know what was going on with me today. I've just it was just one of them days where I wasn't using my brain or something. But yeah, um, so, you know, when you first cut yourself, you don't even feel it. So everything's fine. You're just looking like, did I just cut myself? And then I look, blood start pouring out. So I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and then I'm putting it under water, trying to get it, thinking that it's going to stop. It's not that bad. I didn't realize I, I knew once I turned my hand over because I was trying to run water on it just to keep make the blood stop well it was opening up the skin i'm like oh my god i gotta get my hand out of this water so that's when i got stuff and started wrapping and saying i gotta go to the er but it doesn't look bad it's just a very long cut and anytime you cut yourself on your thumb it's like jagged across my thumb like this 
So it's across my thumb. Of course, it's in the spot where it bends. So every time you move it or you uh, touch something, it hurts. So it's, it should heal pretty easily. That's why I wanted to go to urgent care and make sure I got a tetanus shot. But yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Um, and I, like I said, I was cutting my hair. I had everything. I had done everything. Thank God I didn't have half my hair done and half of it wasn't done. Thank God. <laughs> I didn't have to go to urgent care like that. But um, so it was just me cleaning up the scissors and I was trying to make sure I got all any product if I had any product on them because I didn't want the scissors to rust because I paid good money for them. But even when I paid good money for those scissors, I had no idea them scissors was that short for real, for real. You could use hair scissors for quilting, okay? <laughs> Sharp as them scissors are. So yeah, and then my husband, of course, I'm like, I'm I'm just so disgusted with myself. I don't feel like doing anything. Hey, so Becca, I don't feel like doing a thing. And then he's like, oh, you're going to do your live. I'm like, even if I don't sew, I, I feel like I can sew. But even if I don't sew, I can come on here and talk anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Susie, Susie K says, hi, everyone. Just finished dinner. Welcome to the chat. T has a one and a one quarter inch cut, which should be... 0 0.75 after the seam allowance on each end. <laughs> All right, Tom. <laughs> he says, sorry for your ouchie. And of, of course, that sucker hurt really, really bad after a while. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, but I'm fine. I've just been taking like over the counter Tylenol for pain. Um, she did numb it. Still see a net in here. She numbed it. She cleaned it with saline first and then they injected it with some stuff. So, of course, the first injection her, she put the first one in and then she kind of waited a few seconds and then she started injecting the other places. But then when she started doing them stitches, boy, she was going down pretty deep. I'm like, ooh, wee. But uh, I feel a whole lot better now. I just took more pain medicines because I had taken pain med before I left the house, Tylenol, just to make sure because I didn't know if they were going to what they were going to do. I, whenever I go to the dentist <laughs> and then I knew I cut myself, so I'm going to urgent care. So I'm like, you know what? Anytime I go to those type places, I take a cup of Tylenol before I go, just in case. You never know if you're going to be in some pain when you go some places. So I was glad that they weren't going to give me, inject me with anything that was like total body uh, injection, that it was just in the local area. So because I already had taken some stuff. OK. Bye, Darcy. Sorry you're having trouble. Miss T, you want me to take your mind off that thumb? No, sir. I got it under control, sir. <laughs> That's from Kevin. <laughs> Rich says, That's a good idea, T, to take medication before going on urge care. Yes, Dennis, too, just in case. Um, you just never know. You know, you're not an expert in your mouth. You can't see in your mouth to see everything yourself. So anytime I go to the dentist, I make sure I pop something before I go to the dentist. So if they hit a spot that hurt, sometimes I don't even realize that I'm sensitive to cold. I can drink. I love drinking cold water. I don't have a problem with that. But then when they spray cold water into my mouth, that's a totally different thing. It's weird. So I always take something just in case. Thank you, Vivian. Says prayers for you, Damali. 
hope you feel better and heal quickly. Yes. See, I just noticed you have a Bernie, Bernie sewing machine. I thought you had a brother machine. I got all machines, uh, Susie. <laughs> I probably got, I can't remember now, six or seven, maybe five or six singers. I'll start with that number. Different uh, models. And then I have one, two uh, baby locks. You got this Bernina. I got another Bernina. And then I have the brother. Um, I told people Wednesday. You must have missed Wednesday's chat. I told people Wednesday that I missed sewing on my Bernina sewing machine. So I wanted to put it back up. And I have set my brother machine up on my dining room table so I can work on bags when I'm in there. But anytime... Uh, the problem with uh, the brother machine, and it's not a problem. I knew that going in, so it's not a negative, is that every once in a while I need to sew a zigzag stitch. Like I decided that I was going to take all of my extra Bozo NR foam and my uh, soft and stable foam, and I wanted to sew the pieces together so that I could reuse them uh, because it costs a lot of money. <laughs> And uh, I was just sewing pieces together and I couldn't do that on my brother because it, it's only a straight stitch machine. So I just, I miss sewing on here. I miss the fact that it has this super giant uh, bobbin and that I can sew forever before my bobbin thread runs out. So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, doing my regular piecing back on this because I was doing regular piecing and bag making on my brother. And I'm not uh, knocking any of the features of that brother other than that needle threader. I hate it. <clears throat> um, uh, but other than that, I just prefer sewing on a high-end sewing machine. That's just me. I like too many uh, additions on my computerized machines. <laughs> <laughs> Right, the debt free quilter says Kevin channeling major pain up. Yeah, he yes, he mad because I got him one day when we were in the car. He don't know anything about major pain movie, and he was in there talking about <laughs> something hurt. I can't even remember what hurt him now. <laughs> I think it was his wrist. His wrist was bothering him. I think. And I'm a passenger. He driving and I didn't even care. And, he, and I said, you want me to take your mind up that there wrist? And he goes, sure. So I reached over and pinched him. <laughs> He's still mad about that. It's like you told me to take your mind off of it. I was successful, I feel. <laughs> Do I have a favorite part of the of this Bernina 770? A whole lot of it I do like. I will. Uh, I have to do. I need to do a follow up review on this machine. I've been sewing on this machine now almost two years, and I still haven't done the review follow up. But there are quite a few things I like about this Bernina. There are some things I hate about it. I'll tell you what I hate. The number one thing I hate is this freestanding tray that if you put your arm on it or whatever, it knocks it off track here. It should have legs for more stability and it's plastic. They could have, and it's a weird kind of plastic. It could have been better made in my opinion. That's what I hate the most on this Bernina. Um, it's not much that I hate. It's heavy. So I have stopped taking it to, um, quilt retreats or classes or anything like that I have to sew on something else so I have been trying to get comfortable with my singer featherweight so I can take it to class although it's heavy but at least it's already packed up in everything so I don't have to worry about packing anything but there's a lot on here that I love um <laughs> 
<laughs> or needle threader on brothers, push the thread cutter. Then lower the foot, then you just need to, that works for me. I tried that technique because I've been trying all kinds of ways, but when you lower your feed dogs, you prevent the thread guide from opening up. So when I go to pull the thread through on my model, it will not stay in the needle. You can see where the bend is in it, and but it, it came back out of the needle because it didn't have room to stay in there so when it went in and it came back it took it back out because it had no extra thread play so i've had never had luck with most of my thread cutters my uh, needle threaders if the feed dogs are down they mostly don't work for me uh, that's just me maybe yours your tension's a little different where um you have something else that you, you know works out for you but mine's won't work that way <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, don't get an attitude up in here. <laughs> and and that pre quilter said, at least I didn't dislocate his finger. <laughs> right. He, he, did you go to the doctor? Yes, I did. I went to urgent care and I have to go back in 10 days to get the stitches out. So I do, I do go back. <laughs> Diane's even laughing at Kevin. <laughs> he needs to quit talking about he's still healing from a pinch two years ago. He needs to quit. The Janome tabletops are nice. I agree with you, Miss T. Remo, saying talking about this Bernina tabletop. That's what I hate. Okay, we need to get them thumbs up, everyone. That's Remo. Thank you for reminding people to hit the thumbs up, guys. Appreciate if you could do that. It helps keep my videos, my quote videos in circulation, even though I haven't sold a thing and we're at 830 already. OK. <laughs> oh, God. Miss T has some major pain pinchers on her. You are funny. You need to go away. OK. So. Hi, Sharon Lewis. Welcome. <laughs> Tom, quit helping uh Kevin. He'll be all right. So we're gonna work on. I'm back. Uh, let me see. The pattern's called not today. K e n o t today. I am working on border blocks. I need thirty six more blocks to go around the outer edge of my quilt top. I have made 64 blocks. I needed a total of 100 for the size that I'm making. So I have 64 blocks made already. So now I'm working on the last 36. The border blocks are a little bit different uh, than the inside blocks. And I don't even have enough pieces cut because I told you all that I just cut stuff with my go cut little kits and I put them up. So even though I need 16 blocks in the way that I'm going to make now, I only have enough pieces for 12 right now. So I have enough pieces to do 12 of the 16 blocks. So that's what we're going to work on today. And I move my foot pedal. That position's never going to work. I don't even know where this Velcro come from. I haven't used any Velcro. It's just sitting on my leg. <laughs> it must have come off. Maybe it came off of this. This is a computer desk, and it's got the little tray you would normally put your keyboard in. Maybe it was under there, but it's sitting on my lap. Okay. Stitch length. It's two. Okay. I haven't sewed on here so long. It feel like it's stitching small. Let me make sure. Oh, it's pulling the thread underneath. That's what it's doing. Okay. Those were my thread tails I pulled up. Like something's not right. You know when your machine isn't cooperating or sewing right. Just stop and investigate. <laughs> Last thing you need is some stitch a uh, chain piece a lot of pieces and then you look up and none of them are stitched correctly 
And then thinking of that, let me turn it over and make sure it's okay. Just the beginning, which will be cut, caught in a seam. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, do you realize how much you use your thumb? <laughs> you definitely use it to put two pieces of fabric together. Everybody but Kevin. Kevin has mastered uh, using his middle fingers to do stuff. Me, not so much. So this is going to be a learning curve here. Uh, I will not be cutting anything. I'm so glad that I have all of my cutting done for the bags that I don't have to cut not one thing. I don't know what possessed me. That was my, you know, I'm a night owl. So I was up to about two, maybe three in the morning, cutting all those pieces out that I needed. And I was trying to also start a video on it. So that takes me longer too. Um, people want to know what I do with the cosmetic bags that are different. So I'm going to talk about that in a video. So I've been doing that while I've been cutting. I've been showing what the changes are. So yeah. Hi, Maria Quarterman. <laughs> Hi, Moldy Lasagna. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> You just know. <laughs> Moldy Lasagna says she uses her middle fingers a lot. I didn't ever realize how much I use, especially since I'm left-handed. But I do a lot of things left, uh, right-handed. Like I still use my computer mouse right-handed. I haven't even been over there. Like I said, I came home. I haven't done anything but fed myself. I put the food in the bowl and then my husband handled it after that. Um, but yeah. Uh, you just don't realize how much you, you, you use stuff. So I won't be doing anything on the computer for a few days. This got to, I got to keep my wrap, hand wrap for four days. So I won't be cutting or using, doing much on a computer anyway. So I only sew what's cut. I'm not even going to muck with the um, AccuQuilt stuff either. Not doing that. Oh, spinach lasagna is moldy lasagna. Okay. Miss T, is the pattern by So Emma? Uh, Renee White, which pattern? The, uh, the Not Today, K-N-O-T, Not Today. Google Not Today. I don't know who it's by right now. Kevin might know. He knows everything. Hi, Patricia Priest. <laughs> Yeah, I can't cut with my AccuQuilt, uh, but the dies are heavy. Uh, I have studio. Most of my dies are studio. I do have some go dies, uh, but when I'm cutting these type of pieces, like I'm short pieces, um, those are on. Most of those are on my studio die because I can cut more pieces at one time. So I don't want to pick up anything heavy because when you're starting to pick up stuff that's heavy, you start using your thumb. I've Since I've been home, it's been little things. I'm not going, some of them is crazy, okay? <laughs> and it's like, you mean to tell me that that put pressure on my thumb? You don't realize what puts pressure on your joints until one of them hurt. So...
And Rich says he's a lefty too. That's cool. Yeah, the pattern I'm working on is called Not Today. Just Google it. K-N-O-T. Today. And uh, Kevin says, yes, it is. It is by So Emma. Okay. Now, the problem is, is that I'm making mine in a different size. Um, I was trying to make it so that it was bed size and I didn't want to make so all those pieces together. I think my bed size quilt should be under a thousand pieces. So my quilt's going to be, uh, do it has a size on here? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. My quilt's going to end up being 100 by 100 because I increased the um, size. I wanted it to be at least 96 inches square. I'm just going to use it. It was I had all this um, floral fabric just out, and, I, and I'm getting sick and tired. When I get tired of looking at something, then I'll just start cutting it into anything. And so I just start cutting it into the not today. But they had it in different sizes. And so I just ignored her sizes and went and um, cut my own size in whatever gold dye I had. And that's what I did. Um, it's, it's been sitting as a kit for over a year. And so I pulled it out a little bit last year towards late last year did a little bit of sewing and then i brought it back out and i worked on it a few sewing sessions doing the live chats on saturdays uh, but it's not one of my priority projects it's just something that i had in a container that i'm trying to use up so that's what that is let's see if we can use a wood press here <laughs> Um, it's by So Emma. You can order PDF or paper pattern from the Fat Quarter Shop. Thank you, Sue. Appreciate that. It's been so long since I cut this, and I don't have it right here with me. So thank you, Sue. Kevin remembers all of that kind of stuff. I never put it in my head to remember. <laughs> <laughs> the pattern I bought and showed you all on Wednesday, I can't even tell you what that pattern is today, okay? I can figure out the name, but I can't tell you who it's by. Sometimes I can't even figure out the name. <laughs> Thanks, Diane57. Erling Butler says, good night, everyone. Stay safe. Take care. Good night, Erling. Thank you for popping in. So um, I got to finish these blocks. I need to finish. Uh, if I finish these 12, I do need to sew my four blocks together for the four-star general. I doubt if I do that because it's already 846. <laughs> it was a quarter till before I started sewing, okay? <laughs> so we'll see. I did oil my machine before I went live because I haven't used this Bernina in a while. And they love oil. Hey, June Hansen. I don't know if I said your name or not. Welcome to the chat. A tisket, a tasket is the pattern she shared on Wednesday. I mean, I remember that because it's, I was, it, it's, um, uh, Let's sew a basket or something up after that. A little fabric basket or something. So, yeah. Yeah, but I don't remember that kind of stuff. Sue says, 
I bought the PDF when I couldn't find the paper version. An hour after I printed it out, I found the paper version. Yeah, I tend to like, if I'm going to buy something, I tend to like to get the paper version. But PDFs are good, too. Once you download them, you just do a search on your machine. You, you don't lose them, at least. A paper pattern you can lose. The PDF is nice. Kevin and I were on the Iowa Shop Hop when we saw this quilt. So I we bought this last July, the end of July last year. And then I made a few blocks after I cut the kit in late last year, maybe December or sometime when I didn't have anything else to sew. Because that's what I'll do is I'll just pull out a container of pre-cut pieces. I always can have something to sew for sewing chat. <laughs> always. <laughs> I got too many kits pre-cut. Uh, good night, Vivian. I like SVG files for cutting on Cricut. You know, I've never cut my quilt pieces on the electronic cutters. I don't know. It just seemed like it, unless it's like applique pieces that are curvy or something, it seems like otherwise it's faster to do it by hand, but I don't know. And I can cut more pieces, whereas they're only cutting like one layer on a 12 by 12. So I don't know. I have to I have to experience that so I can make a real informed decision, I guess. But that's interesting because I saw a girl who did applique and they were all, you know, all kinds of shapes and little nuggets here and there that she had to go in and out of. And that was pretty cool to see her cutting that. Okay, so I'm going to make those three-piece half-square triangles again. Hey, Delia Short. She says, hi, T and everyone. Hello, hello. My printer divorced all of our tablets and computers. I have a HP that goes offline all the time, and it's like I have to reboot the computer to get that thing to hook back up. And sometimes I have to cut it off. That's my laser printer, because I don't, I think, Part of it is that I don't use it all the time, but still, it's like the computer is right here. <laughs> How do you just disconnect from the computer? You can go into shutdown mode or sleep mode, not shutdown, but sleep. <laughs> Cynthia talking about you and Kevin are two peas in a pod. Miss Topaz says, I think it's an HP thing. My printer always has to be rebooted. And see, I used to use um, Epson's laser printers. And then I just couldn't find one at a good price for a home user. Because I, I used Epson all my time at work. I really love the Epson brand. But it's like, I don't want to pay all that money for that printer that I don't use all the time. That's what I print my patterns, my real patterns on. 
that I sell. If I'm giving out free patterns, I just print them on a regular dot matrix or not dot matrix, inkjet. <laughs> dot matrix is the one that had the little pinhole papers. But yeah. So I'll just sew some pieces together today. I thought if I even get these 12 blocks made, just because I'm slower today, not using my thumb. We'll see. <laughs> um, Kevin and T were twins in another life. That's from Wash Your Hands. <laughs> Uh, Dee Dee says, still working on the four-star general. How many people have finished it? Do you know, T? All I know is who's posted in the group. And when it's time to do the drawing, I only know from those that put it in the right spot. <laughs> put their photo in the right spot. So uh, I have no idea. I just know that my friend Sarah did hers and Jennifer uh, another friend of mine has hers. So I got two of them that are done. I got another friend that's working on it. But other than that, I have, uh, you know, whatever's in the group, I can't remember names. Uh, whatever's in the group, we have maybe about five posted in the group, maybe. So that's all I know. I know it's not me and Kevin. Okay. Um, Darcy says we have 105 people and I only see 72 thumbs up. You're getting ready to go. If you're just getting here, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Thank you, Darcy. I'll pin that one. So go please hit the thumbs up button and come right on back in. You're not going to miss a thing. See, I'm impressed at how much sewing you get done. I actually used to sew every day. I used to get a lot of stuff done. I don't get anything done like I used to. It's between me uh, running business and having to handle business things as well. Uh, the end of this month is when I'm the quilt judge. So I'll have two days out of my life that uh, I'll be judging quilts. They contacted me this week and I did write back and ask, do I have to write something on every quilt? <laughs> she said, you don't have to write a thing. We have scribers for you. I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I hate writing. Okay. So they got somebody, she said, all you got to do is think out loud and they'll write it down. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, that could be dangerous. <laughs> we'll see how, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you, June. Thank you, Delias, as they already hit the thumbs up. I thought you were finished with both your four store gems. No, ma'am. And in the second one, I only got six blocks done. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna just make it where it's got six blocks at the top and put something else underneath. I don't know. But I'm not finishing the four store gender on that rare white, black, and gray. I I'm gonna do something else. I don't want to do another one of those. I don't want to make any more border blocks. And I even got border blocks. I don't even know what I'm going to do with those. I don't know. It's Right now, it's in a container not even being uh, thought about. That's the status of my second one. My first one, I have the 11 blocks put together. I got to put the 12th block together and then add it to the other 11 and then at the border so i had to find my book i had misplaced my book last month i got my book got my fabric got my pieces 
So I just need to now sew it, and I'm not interested. <laughs> I've been making bags. So, and like I said, I still have a few bag orders, so I was trying to work on those. I thought I was going to have my aunt's bag done today, but I was like, I guess not. She won't get that at church tomorrow. All right, so those are all of the three-parters. So now I'm just making half-square triangles. Um, and Melissa says, if you can't be kind, at least be subtle. This is the thing. When you're, if they're saying, think your thoughts, every once in a while, I try not to do that, but every once in a while, you'd be like wondering, what in the world? <laughs> I don't intentionally uh, do cruel things at a quilt show. I don't voice anything negative about any quilt at a show. I only speak on what's positive. But you have stuff that's in your head that you don't speak. And when you start just talking because you got to tell it, say it so somebody can write it down, I just hope it all goes well. That's all I'm saying. I would never intentionally say anything about somebody's quilt. But they're paying me to be a judge. <laughs> Kevin says he's been good thus far talking about the puppy. Puppy training takes a lot of work and regimen, and he is my first boy in many, many years. Yeah, it's a lot different. Whoops, I'm putting two of them. I don't know if I got two of them by mistake. I'll put one to the side and see if I've got an extra piece. <laughs> That's the best I can do with what I'm working with. <laughs> and I got to make four more with these pieces anyway because i only i'm supposed to make 16 and only got enough to make 12 enough pieces cut to make 12. i need background fabric i think that's what i need is background fabric cut. i think i have I need the little quarter square triangles. That's what I need. Everything else I think I have enough for right now. I might need more large background half square triangles. But I got enough prints so far. I think I'm going to have enough prints and some prints left over. <laughs> because I don't count. I just cut. You can always use half square and quarter square triangle somewhere. Um. <laughs> the light says, what happened to your thumb? I cut it with some scissors. If you want to hear the whole story, go back. After we're done with live, I don't want to repeat it for everybody that's been here. It was it was a saga kind of day. June says she's pressing fabrics to make a Halloween quilt kit I bought two years ago. Time to get kits sold. Yes. I don't buy many kits. But the stuff I do have, I do need to get it sold up. I bought some kits from Quilt in a Day when they had a sale. One of them was a form quilt. Eventually, one of these days, I want to make it and donate it to somebody. But I haven't even had a chance to do that. I thought I would have it done by Christmas, but it don't look like it's going to happen. So, 
last time or oh, they talking about puppies i'm gonna skip some of that hey jason lewis says he's just joining uh angela stringer good evening tnt folk glad to be joining the sew-in <laughs> it says the c-in the sew-in okay <laughs> Um, uh, okay, I'm caught up. <laughs> And I'm so hungry. I uh, made some chicken stew yesterday. I ate it twice yesterday. I ate it today when I got back home from urgent care because I did not want to do anything. And I'm hungry and I don't want to eat that again. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm going to eat for dinner. And kind of since COVID, we've kind of quit eating out. We eat out very rarely now. So that's not even on the agenda. Maybe it's peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I don't know. Oh, June says she had bought a lot of kits because she wasn't sure how long COVID was going to last. And now she needs to sew them up. Yep. Because I was never a kit person because they never put enough fabric in them. But every once in a while, I see something priced right. And I'm like, even if I don't make the kit, the fabric was a good deal for the amount of fabric in it. Especially when they put them half off or 75% off. Then that's when I start buying stuff for the fabric, not necessarily the kit. So true. Thank you, Lizette, says rent is paid. Here's to a great night, all. It's been a long day. Good night. Thank you so much for coming in, Lizette. See, Joy Creation says, good night, T. Take care of the thumb. I will. Just don't pick anything up. <laughs> And when I went to urgent care, I think them people thought I was not hurt as bad because I was trying to tell them that I was bleeding everywhere. And they were like, you know, I'm in pain, but I got this thumb wrapped because if I hadn't wrapped this thumb really tight before I left, I'd have been running in there howling and screaming. OK, because that's what I was doing here. Like, oh, my God, give me some wrap. <laughs> I needed that thumb. I had to, uh, it was taking my husband too long. I just started grabbing paper towels and started wrapping them around my hand so I could squeeze it myself to keep it from bleeding. All right, so that's 12. We need another 12. <clears throat> and it's 906. Not bad. T, could you do a cook channel? My go-to store made organic salads. All that sugar does not agree. All that sugar does not agree with me. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I don't even cook every day. It's like, uh, what I end up doing is I, I do a lot of soups. <laughs> And then I pull stuff out, and then I'm an easy um, person to feed. I don't know. I'll think about it. Maybe. I don't know. I'm barely uploading quilt videos. I got to edit those. Linda Denton says, hello, everyone, or hey, everyone. Hi, Linda. 
Try a grilled peanut butter and jelly. Much better than it sounds. I've never had that, but Kevin, uh, just last week, we were talking on the phone and I was making uh, apple pies for Labor Day. And um, Kevin says, you need to put peanut butter on that apple. I'm like, you know what? I like peanut butter and I like apples, but I've never mixed them. That was so good. I ended up doing that for my meal <laughs> uh, that night. It was must have been Sunday night when I was making those pies. So that was pretty funny. It was pretty cool. It was good. And I don't know if my apples are still... I like uh, crispy apples. I don't like them when they get soft. I have to see if they're still crispy. That's a good idea to eat. Then I don't have to spread it. I could do apples and peanut butter. <laughs> the lady uh, read my shirt, found out, you know, I was a quilter. She says, I'm kind of scared to stitch on you. You know how stitches should look. I say, girl, I have never had anybody stitch me while I was awake. I've had surgery where I've gotten stitched, but I've never been had somebody while I was awake stitching me while I'm watching. <laughs> now, some people will pass out faint from that kind of stuff, but I'm like, I'm going to I'm going to know everything you're doing. <laughs> and he says he loves peanut butter with apples and bananas. That's Kevin. I make grilled peanut butter the same way. I just make grilled cheese. It's yummy. Cheese with apples is good. So that's good too. Haven't had that. Mona likes it. Uh, peanut butter with bananas too. Got to get this one started. For some reason, I can't get a grip on the bottom. Once it's in there, I got another hand now. <laughs> All right. Using my index and pointer finger is weird. And Diane said, yep, I sold through my finger. See, that was the thing. I'm like, when she was talking about stitching, no... I said, this is the last thing a quilter want to see is somebody stitching through their finger, <laughs> you know, doing stitches. I was not happy to be watching it, but I watched it anyway. I'm one of those people. I'm not afraid of needles. I be on them people when they sticking me and all of that. You better know what you're doing because you only going to get one chance to make a mistake over here. We're going to get somebody else. <laughs> And them stitches hurt. Even though I was numb, she went, you know, they go down so far to go up under. I don't know what that layer first, your, uh, I don't know what that layer is, but I could see my skin. Um, I could see the, it's kind of like texture under my skin. It, I, I, my whole, my thumb opened up where I could see that. It wasn't like wide open, but it was open enough that I could see all of that. I can see the inside. I've never seen the inside of my, of my body like that. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But I'm uh, one of those people. I thought I was going to be a nurse. And then when I realized I had to, you know, do the grunt work first to be a nurse, I'm like, I'm not doing that. But as far as giving somebody shots, taking blood, stuff like that, that wouldn't bother me. Messing with somebody's body, uh, body fluids, I don't want to do that other than draw blood. I don't want to deal with all the other stuff.
I don't know if I missed the question, but Kevin's posting. If you have questions concerning T Quilts products, please email Miss T at tquilts at tquilts.com. Yes, please do. Sometimes I don't have uh, things on my site because they have to be like they're custom, need to be cut or something like that. So I kind of don't have everything on my site. So I don't know if I missed the question. If I did, I'm sorry. Jason says, to somebody who is he talking to <laughs> oh he's saying thank you if you can't pull blood on the first stab i'm done with you right <laughs> it's like i'm not scared of needles they don't hurt like they hurt most people but you i'm not gonna sit up here and be your test subject either you better know what you're doing and sometimes i see them already coming with a needle too big I was like, I'm an easy stick. You know, it don't take all that. <laughs> but the girl that, uh, the lady that stitched me up, she was a nurse practitioner. She did a, a good job. She was happy. <laughs> I think she was so sick of people coming in with issues about COVID or cold. And when I come in there and say I cut myself and I think I need stitches and a tetanus shot, she, she was in the back and she go, stitches? <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I should stay in here or not. She sounded too excited. She says, not that I'm uh, happy you hurt yourself or anything. <laughs> it was funny, though. I was like, oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dorsey says she has a girlfriend that is afraid of needles, but yet. We have gone and gotten tattoos. Now, that's funny. I'm one of those people. I'm not scared of needles, but and I don't mind them sticking me for medical purposes, but I will never get a tattoo. I say that today and then watch two years from now, I have a tattoo, but I've been saying that for a long time. I don't ever plan on getting a tattoo. I have enough things happen to me. Oh, uh, so I don't have a need to go do self-inflicted pain. I already have enough pain without that. So I doubt that I would ever get a tattoo. Been saying it for a while. It's been working thus far. It's not that I'm against tattoos. I just, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm a wuss, I guess, at that point. <laughs> but that is funny that they went and got tattoos and she's scared of needles. The cartilage. Okay, thank you. That's uh, Thank you, Melissa, because I'm not medical at all. I do not have a science degree at all. When I realized our, um, our biology was going to make me dissect stuff, I was like, I'm not doing that. So I have a, a BA, not a... BS. So guess what? I got an extra half square triangle, so I guess I need this one. <laughs> I had two of them, the two of the same kind in a row. I wasn't sure if I needed it, but I do. Uh, good night, Francis. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Sue says the reason you're not a nurse is why I'm a dog groomer. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Mona. Thank you for stopping in, too.
Wash your hands. Says I studied to be a nurse until I saw a cadaver. That made me switch careers. <laughs> yep, got to practice on something, and all of it is not going to be plastic. <laughs> Mm -mm. <laughs> um, I think I'm done with this part. I got all my units sewed now so I can make four patch blocks. Next time, raise your hand above your heart. Girl, I did all of that. And I, I did all of that. <laughs> um, and it's so weird. Like, this is not, like, if you're in, my husband drove, so I'm in the car and I got my arm up like this. This is not a comfortable position. <laughs> when you have your arm up, you're normally, like, down here or, you, you know, your arm, yeah, boy, it's, like, resting across your body, which is lower than the heart. So it's kind of weird. It's so funny when you hurt yourself and you all the stuff you think about. But that's the first thing I do anytime I uh, cut myself is I make sure I keep that hand above the heart. Because even when I had it in the sink, I was um, I was like slouched down so that it was still higher than my heart. But yeah, that was it was horrible. It's not as bad as it looks. Well, no, it's not as bad as I thought it would be, but an inch and a half cut that deep, it was it was pretty deep. Like I said, I had never seen the uh, Melissa says it's called cartilage. I've never seen that on myself. So the uh, when it cut, it was so long that it just opened up. Inch and a half is a long cut diagonally across your thumb inch and a quarter or something like that because she thought she was only going to have to do three stitches and had to put a fourth one in there all right that's one <laughs> so this is what i'm just this is one of my units the other ones are half square triangles <laughs> child she was ready <laughs> Right. She was she was like, I'm get to have some fun today. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> mm -mm. I was almost ready to back up out of that place. <laughs> the one that I normally the urgent care I normally go to didn't have Saturday hours. But this place I don't know if they were 24 seven, they were part of a hospital system. So I was already in their computer systems and everything from going to the hospital. So that was another reason that I went to that one because uh, my, the one I normally go to was closed on Saturday. So, but she was, she was ready. She's like, woo hoo wee. <laughs> She actually did a great job. Both of them did. They got good employees in the one I went to. Ella Odom, that was her. I read her. So, hey, Ella, I didn't know you were here. Out of curiosity, was any quilting discussed as you were being stitched, Miss T? Uh, no. I just told her. Um, no, she did. She asked me, what did I do for quilting? And I did tell her that it was a business. And then she asked me, what did I make? And I said, I can, you know, most people, they understand T-shirt quilts. And she did talk about how certain things in the arts are dying that, you know, um, uh, she was, because she was, I think she was asking me what I do because she was trying to figure out if I needed a statement to be off work because she was saying, you cannot use that thumb. And I go, well, I'm retired. Then I said, no, not really. I work for myself. <laughs> I am retired, but I kind of put myself back to work. Um, and so I told her and she says, oh, well, you know, you can't use that. I go, oh, they'll wait. It's the things, uh, the things that I'm doing um, 
most of the people can't do for themselves. And she that's when she started talking about dying art. So that's how uh, that's how they kind of ask what's going on. And then they ask questions like they have two or three people ask you the same question. Like, how did you cut yourself? Like, <laughs> I should have said my husband did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they want you to say you abused or something no i do all of this stuff to myself <laughs> and like i said i had no clue i'm looking at myself like you know i felt something and i go did i cut myself because i'm like i didn't even understand how i could do that I'm cleaning a pair of scissors. How how does that happen? So it was just weird. The whole thing was weird. So I didn't even know I had that much strength to cut myself like that. I'm like that too, T, with IVs. Get it right or send me someone else. It's like, it's not three strikes and you're out right. That's Teresa Louise and Diane says the same thing. Well, think about it. Sewing is fun and she doesn't get to do it every day. <laughs> you got that right from a sewing perspective. But as a quilter and a sewer, I'm looking at her going, this is barbaric. <laughs> Even though she numbed it, I'm like, this is not nice. This is not. This is no, this is not what's supposed to be happening here, <laughs> but it's exactly what I needed, though. <laughs> I needed them stitches because if I had not got them stitches, it would have taken, I would have had to probably have my hand wrapped completely, like not taking it off at all for a few days for it to stop on its own. Kevin go, Miss T and I will get matching Missouri shop hop tattoos. Laughing out loud. Not, you got that right. I am not getting a tattoo. I don't care what the circumstances are. Not even a grandbaby's name, date of birth. Nope, not on my body. I have to go. I just did my tattoo. Just did it. That the way my tattoo artist explained it to me is that it's like grease pickles, like prickles. When like when you're trying something on the stove, it only hurts when the needles are in the skin. Okay. <laughs> See, Carrie and I think alike. <laughs> <laughs> would not put myself through the pain unnecessarily if i needed it for cosmetic or something like that maybe i would change my mind but just for decor mm -mm. Sorry, T, you had a bad day. Hopefully it heals quick. Thank you. It's, you know, I, I always still try to see the positive of everything. I just came right on back home and said I ain't doing another thing. And then I came in here for the live. So I um, got my pieces, just went and pulled out pieces, said I'll sew for the live. And then once this is over, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to eat. And then I'm propping myself back up with my remote control. <laughs> So it's okay. It's all good. People are starting to leave. So please take a peek at your thumbs up before you go. T deserves all her thumbs up for everything she does for us. Thank you, Darcy, <laughs> for reminding people. Appreciate that. Um, Very pretty blocks from Rich. Thank you. And I know that's not your name. Is it Colleen? <laughs> I'm blocking again. I don't know why I can't remember the name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, when Sprinter is here saying hello to you and everyone. Hello, hello, and welcome. Oh, I saw it when I had that huge hematoma on my knee. Okay. 
Yeah, see, every uh, I've had a uh, surgery before, but I was knocked out. Sue says, as I've been organizing my basement, I found a T-shirt from a performance I went to in the late 70s. How can I preserve it? Don't want a T-shirt quilt. Thoughts. You could frame it. Um, you could frame it. Uh, just cut it out and put it around the frame board. Especially if you don't want a pillow or something. I don't want to, I don't want any pillows for myself. <laughs> I'm laughing at Jason. <laughs> Jason, we're gonna have to meet. <laughs> I think he'll fit right in. <laughs> Melissa says, hairdressers have a saying, I am a professional. Do not attempt this at home. I wasn't doing like a total haircut. I was so sick of my hair. My hair was way too long. And I have not found a new hairdresser's. I told y'all the story about my uh, old one. She didn't want to tell me what she was putting in my hair. So my hair needed to be cut. So I was not like doing a hair cut. I was just trimming my hair shorter. But that had nothing to do with me getting cut. What got me cut was cleaning the scissors. That could have happened to a nun hairdresser. I did not realize them scissors was that sharp like good lord and i didn't even like i said i didn't realize i was pressing that hard i was just drying scissors through a towel okay <laughs> i hate if i didn't have a towel miss t i can start an iv without using a tourniquet okay and my sister is a phlebotomist so She's she's now teaching people how to become a phlebotomist. So that's pretty cool. I got I keep pulling stuff from either side. These these pieces are all messed up. I had 12 so that they weren't duplicates on one side. <laughs> Just give up. <laughs> I've been pulling from both sides by now. Trying to read comments. Um, shadow box from the liar for Sue. Oh, Debt Free Quilter says her name is Heather. Okay, thank you. And it's 9.32. You're welcome, Phyllis. <laughs> you know... That's what I say. I mostly always see the pause. I'm like, you all had nothing to do with me hurting my finger. It's like, I didn't feel like if I came in here, since I'm not cutting, I'm not going to press anything with a heavy iron. I figured like I wouldn't be using my thumb if I came in here. So I was the regular stuff I was doing around the house, trying to open a water bottle and <laughs> um, uh, opening the front door to get in the house. 
because my husband was taking the um trash and i said i think you need to come open the door <laughs> it was crazy stuff that you don't think um you would need your hand for especially with me being left-handed because it's my right thumb that i hurt so And the nurse even asked me, she says, are you, I'm, I'm taking it that you're right-handed. And I go, nope, actually I'm left-handed. I do a lot of things right-handed because it frees up my left hand to do other stuff. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Teresa says, what is that that your sister does? A phlebotomist, she teaches people how to draw they work in a where you go get your blood draws and uh, shots, things like that. She works in that department. So normally when you go to a medical center, they'll send you to a room in the building somewhere to go get all of that stuff done. That's what she does. She's the only one in her uh, building. And she's teaching other people to do the job. Her own business, not something she does through her job. She do, does that as her own business. That's the same sister that cooks. It's like all of these people not uh, wanting jobs. Uh, she says, it's a, you know, they're good paying jobs to do that. Um. But they don't have anybody, so she's training people so they can get a job. And most of those jobs come with benefits. So you're working full time for benefits. You're welcome, Teresa. Chocolate Treats here, sis, got home late. Hope all is well with everyone. Hello and welcome. <laughs> Hope you had some fun. So this little wood press do come in handy. <laughs> Jason says the nurse needed to have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> he is too funny. Uh, I thought she was I, well. I thought she was. I thought she was funny. I said, "Well, maybe." I I just felt like she probably was bored with all the stuff that came in, and this was something fun to do for her. You know, you have your specialty things you like, kind of like in quilt making. Some people like piecing. Some like the quilting process. I just felt like maybe she was one of those people that liked to do stitches. So I didn't knock her, but I'm like, mm. <laughs> this could be kind of sadistic. <laughs> and then she was like, when she realized how excited she was, she was like, not that I'm glad you hurt or anything. <laughs> oh, my God. It was funny, though. And I actually love nurse practitioners, actually. They actually explain more than a doctor does. T, I don't see, I don't do pain very well. So no tat tear. What is that your sister does? I think I explained that. They do uh, urine specimens, all of that kind of stuff. Anything that your doctor's office don't do, uh, they'll do in, in her clinic. Um, if you need to have anything checked, that's a bodily fluid. <laughs> and sometimes, like her office, they send, when they had COVID stuff, she was doing um, um, for her office. For, for where she was, they had her doing COVID shots. Now, I don't even know if she was supposed to, but like I said, they changed a lot of stuff because um, because of uh, 
COVID and trying to keep people out of other particular areas. So I don't know. But I know she said when she went to work, they was lined up outside to come in. Okay. <laughs> And Dorsey says, I agree. Uh, doctors, nurses do a lot more than doctors. A nurse practitioner actually does a lot more than the doctors because the doctors don't even have to see you. The nurse practitioner can prescribe medications. Now, if you request a doctor follow up, they have to give it to you. But I don't ever worry about it. If I feel like I'm getting good care and treatment from the nurse practitioner and any assistance that she has, like somebody else came in and gave me. Uh, my shot. So I just, I, I don't worry about asking for an actual physician follow-up. She did an excellent job. And like I said, I'm watching her, even though I see the inside of my hand. <laughs> I'm still sitting there watching her, okay? And my blood pressure was high because of the whole trauma ordeal. So, but they said they also knew that that was why it was high. So they weren't concerned about that. So, but yeah, I had high blood pressure reading and everything. I've never had a high blood pressure reading. <clears throat> Teresa says she wanted to practice practice her stitching art i don't think she was practicing because she did a very good job she tied some good knots and i like that she did each stitch individually instead of doing that shoelace mess so if you know if if it broke on either end you would you know you would lose all your stitches so she made each stitch individually i like that Mm-hmm. And I have, like I said, I, I work for Department of Mental Health. I was a research analyst, but I was also, the people in my department were all uh, clinical people. So I have um, two friends, two close friends that are nurses. And then I also have an occupational therapist as a friend. So I get good advice. So I know when this starts to heal, when I start taking off, when it seals up, I need to start massaging it and all of that so I don't have get scar tissue down in there. So I do know everything I need to do from my, my clinical friends. All right. Let's see if we can put one block together here at least. I need two half square triangles. And then one of these just need different fabric. And this is not going to look like a wrench. My son just got home from work. I am going to see how this his day went. Remember your thumbs up, people, before you go. Good night, Darcy. Thank you so much. So we'll sew this one. At this point, I normally would press with a real iron, but hey, let's carry on. We're not going to be touching that because I iron with my right hand because I do that so my left hand's free. <laughs> I iron just like you right-handed people because the ironing boards, when I go to retreat and things like that, they're set up that way. So it's, it's just every day I'm used to that. So I won't be doing that because every time I do something using the hand, the thumb ends up joining the party when I got to pick something up. So I won't be doing that. All right, we'll put this up here. 
This is my four patch. I need to lay another one out. I should have laid out two while I had them there. I always try to make one test block. Then I can use it to make all the other blocks. But I didn't think ahead. All right, I need two of these. You go this way. This that way. One of these. And one of these. This right there. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Heather saying, I need to take my butt to bed before my permanently exhausting pigeon status become passed out pigeon. <laughs> Good night, Heather. Thank you for coming just in case you leave. Appreciate you commenting and chatting with us. Um, you are so right, T. You have to use your right hand for ironing because there are no left-handed irons out there. Take this one off. So this one, so they're connected. And like I said, I don't have a date to get this one completed, so it's no big deal. Like I said, I got to cut again anyway, so it's not going to get done for a minute now. So I won't be cutting for a while. Um... At least, well, maybe two more scenes. <laughs> I was going to say at least one more scene. I got to get it off. Well, I don't. I can break my thread on this Bernina too because I always have to re-oil it when I come back in. So, this is weird. I don't know how Kevin been sewing like this for years. <laughs> He does it often, off and on, where he sews just using his fingers the whole fabric. Okay. Just looked a little funny. I'm hoping I matched that up right. <laughs> when it was loose, it looked like it wasn't lined up right. And then when I go back and look at it, it looks fine. So we'll see in a minute. It got a pen in it. I don't know what more it wants. Okay, we'll sew this one. We'll have to. <laughs> and then I think I'm going to stop there. I don't need to overdo it. A little bit slower. I'm just feeling awkward. <laughs> Teresa says, would your hubby cut for you? Nope. <laughs> he is, he's, uh, he'll tell you what he likes, don't like. Um, if you got something that needs to be picked up in order or something, he'll do that. But that is not his area. He is not interested. My husband is never, don't even want to touch the long arm machine, okay? I thought since he was a machinist, he might be more interested in the machine. Nope, I have to like, it's like pulling teeth to get him to work on it when I need some stuff done. He just don't want to mess it up. He don't have any involvement in the making process of quilting. But he likes what I do. He likes the end results. Like he liked all the bags. And he goes, what are you going to do with all those bags? And now I don't have any bag except for 
the very first um, scrappy one that I made that I ended up using for my featherweight foot. I have that one and I have the um, the cancer, the, br the breast cancer one, the pink and black one. That one has my brother parts. I had made myself all kinds of bags. I got rid of all of them. I sold them. So I got to make myself bags. And I'm going to make him one too. So he, when we travel, when we start back traveling, he can have his bag. Make him something. He won't get that bag. I'm going to make him a box, boxy bag. I'm going to cut this just because I don't know which way I'm going to be pressing these seam allowances. I'm not going to press this final one. I don't even know what's the top or the bottom. I'm assuming this is the top. So this is what I'm sewing now, starting some of my border units. So I got one seam going now that got moved. Just put a little clip so it can go back the other way. And I'll press my center seams later. But this is my block. Today I need, um, like I said, 16 of those. I'm going to cut this here. I'm just going to chat. Uh, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to overthink. <laughs> because what I was doing earlier today was no pressure. And apparently I must have been overthinking something. <laughs> And then my second block here, same thing, same thing, just different fabrics or mixing up the fabrics. So I will press all of this, give it a good press whenever I'm using the iron again, hopefully before we, <laughs> before we come back next week. And then I'll make, see if I can get more background pieces cut because I need more of that too. So. And I have to find the fabric because I think I took it back downstairs. My screensaver came on. Um, good night, Ray. See you next time. Good night, Marie. <laughs> uh, and Kevin says... Her friend Kevin would cut for her. He has before. Yes, he has cut for me. Uh, Jason says, make that very nice bag. <laughs> He'll have a nice bag. It's just going to be a boxy tote. He, not, he, don't, he don't need the other bag. Very nice tea. Very pretty. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, June. <laughs> Uh, I hear that Kevin is a pretty good friend. That's from Sue. <laughs> Will he do dishes? My That's the other thing they told me. You can take showers, but don't immerse your hand into water, like doing dishes or something. I go, I don't, I'm saying in my head, I don't do the dishes. I do the dishes very rarely, like around holidays and stuff. Or if I'm, if I'm cooking, like, uh, two pots of something and baking something in the oven, then I'm washing dishes as I go. But now that my thumbs out of commission, I already know what I can and can't do. I can't lift a thing. <laughs> so I won't be doing that because pots get heavy with stuff in them. So I won't be washing any dishes. My husband does dishes. It's nice to have a friend like Kevin. Everyone should have a Kevin friend. Sorry, but I had to go take a peek. <laughs> That's okay. Welcome back. I'm just chatting right now. We only got like nine minutes. If the chat doesn't, if nothing's in the chat, we'll just end a little bit early. But I'm like mentally done. <laughs> I don't want to do any more. And then I don't want to make start making mistakes because I'm doing it anyway. So... I have my pieces for my four-star general in here. But like I said, I'm just tired of, uh, I don't want to do any more sewing. It's been a long day. Hi, Kathy D's Creative Chaos. <laughs> Carrie says, what pattern are you going to use on your 
hubby's back tea. Just a boxy tote that I've showed those here before. Um, just going to make him a nice boxy tote. Let him pick his fabric. That's all. Uh, when we go out of town, I have, I've always had a cosmetic tote of some kind that I put all of my toiletries in. And he's always just put his stuff in the store bag. <laughs> so it's funny. So I'll make him something so he can put his stuff. And then he can set up his bag too so that, that he doesn't have to pack it. Like the whole point for me having my toiletry bag is that when I get ready to go out of town, I don't have to pack it. Everything is already in there. Whereas he has to go get, you know, current stuff, his current deodorant, his this and that. So what he'll do is he'll buy stuff to, so he doesn't have to do that anymore. I don't have a pattern. <laughs> I'm just making them. I've uh, been making boxy stuff for so long. And they got so many YouTube videos. I'm going to be doing the cosmetic tote. I'm in the process. I was in the process of recording that, talking about the changes I made to the pattern, as well as I cut out all the pieces. But that's going to be delayed because uh, I'm hoping that I can sew. But at times, I'm going to need to use my thumb. I don't see how I can go too far with that. We'll see. I'm going to try to sew on the cosmetic bags and continue. Um, stitching but if it becomes a problem where i can't i need to use my thumb there are certain parts steps of it that i need to use my thumb uh, so they won't be done in two days like i intended it to be i intended it for those bags to be done today but that's not going to happen um Flower Girl says, it has been lovely listening to you talk, and I've been keeping up with the chat. I have been missing my old cook group, so this has been lovely. Thank you. Well, you're so welcome. It's our pleasure. Please come back. And if you ever got questions or need some help, this there's a lot of people in the chat with a lot of years of experience. You know, quilters' opinions comes like a grain of salt. They're free. <laughs> so you can do with it as you please. But, you know, we also help people with dilemmas as well. So, and good night and thank you so much. And Carl says she hasn't tried bags yet. Now, I've been sewing I, for, before I was doing the Not Todays, I was sewing on bags uh doing some of the live sewing chat so you can go back and look at some of those within the last six weeks or so because i just started sewing and i was just telling you what i was doing as i was going those are not they're boxy but they're a different style um i'm trying to think what would it's like a boxy bag is called a traveler's bag because they you it is made for you to put um personal i personal hygiene items in the way that the zipper goes around the side so that it can open wider so it's also a traveler's bag and time says i keep thinking i should try one of the easy boxy bags and you just have to be careful which youtube video you're using if you're somebody that likes to have all finished edges then you need to make sure that you're watching somebody that is using a lining. And then some people will have where they use a lining, but they stitch all three layers together and then they use bias binding or some kind of binding to bind all the raw edges. And I don't want to be binding all the raw edges. So I actually box mine, uh, my lining and my um, main fabric are separate. So. It just depends on what style you want. Maybe at some point when I get to the boxy bags again, I might record that as well. Because I I have just been <laughs> flying by the seat of my pants. I go, oh, I don't like that. And so then I change it to something else. So, yeah. Um, Good night, Teresa Louise. I quilt too. Thank you so much for popping in here tonight. I appreciate that. Uh, Remo says, hit the thumbs up on the way out. And thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Remo. I keep forgetting to say that as people are uh, typing in their good nights. But please make sure you hit the thumbs up for us. It's really appreciated. And June Hansen is saying good night too. 
uh, chocolate treat says, yes, T, go easy tomorrow and the next day. Take care so you can get back to handling that sewing machine. Yes. So I will. I won't be doing lifting anything. Like I said today, I realized, you know, I was like, OK, that's a strain on my thumb. And so it's like you don't even realize how much you use something until it's hurt. So I know to just sit down and chill for the most part <laughs> so that I'm not um, going to do something crazy like here just handling two pieces of fabric or my pieces, I did okay. I don't know if I'm going to be able to even sew cosmetic bags because you're doing a lot more stuff. <laughs> so I will probably not do that. I think I'm just going to chill on the cosmetic bags. So, because I want them to be done right because they're customer orders. It's not like they're my bags and I can just go and make them you know and if it if it's successful it's okay and if it's not it's okay no it's not gonna be okay i need to make sure those bags are nice so uh the hour just flew by hope everyone has a great day tomorrow good night jason thank you we only got a couple more minutes thank you t for doing the video and chat when you're in such a condition that's very sweet of you uh, I come in here because it's also my therapy. <laughs> I try to do live chats unless I just absolutely cannot. And then uh, I will post something to let people know that it's not going to happen. But um, it also helps me as well, especially when I have bad days. Chill and eat chocolate chip cookies. I actually like oatmeal raisin cookies. That's my favorite cookie. And then I've had my favorite cookie is actually ginger snaps, but sometimes they too hard. I don't like them. I have to put them in the oven. It's too much work. <laughs> so um, I have made some myself, but it's been a long time since I made ginger snaps. But that's actually my favorite. But my runner up is oatmeal raisin cookies. I love those. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and end here, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming here today. Uh, you all stay blessed. Be safe and quilt out and for my new people we also have just a one hour chat it's no sewing on wednesdays at 7 p.m central standard time so we'd love to see you there bye everybody <laughs>